In this ROS2 Gazebo tutorial, I will do a robot simulation in Gazebo using ROS2 control with the Tesla bot. I'm going to start off by talking about how to install the Gazebo and ROS2 control packages, go through the package structure, talk about the coordinate frames that you need for your URDF file, go through the changes that you need to make for your CMake list and package.xml file, go over how to display your robot in Gazebo and the different things you need for your launch file, talk about the types of ROS2 controllers, go through the Gazebo and ROS2 control add-ons that you need to put inside your URDF file, go through the control YAML file that you need to set up your control parameters, and finally simulate your robot with the joint publisher. So by the end of this video, we're going to see the Tesla bot doing some air curls. To get everything set up, we need to install our Gazebo and ROS2 control packages. So here we have the different ones that we need. So just run these commands here. Now let's go ahead and create our package. So I made a package using the ROS2 package create command, and this is a general folder structure that we have. So there's a couple of new things that we've added. We added a new config folder. We added a new launch file folder. There's a new mesh folder. Um, a URDF folder. So these files are also new ones, including the joint controller. We have the gazebo launch.py. We have our STL files in here. We have our joint publisher that we've added, as well as our Zacro file for our Tesla bot. And then the two main changes we made are inside our CMake list and package.xml, which we'll go over later on. Now let's take a look at our coordinate frames that we need for our URDF file. If you're new to URDF files, I have a URDF tutorial in my channel, so go check it out. So here is a list of all of the joints that we're using. So we have the connection from the world to the head, head to the body, body to the shoulder, shoulder to the upper arm, uh, upper arm to the lower arm, and then finally the lower arm to the hand. So these are all the lists of the connections between the parent and child types. And then we have the type of joints where we have some fixed ones and some revolute ones. So all of the revolute joints you can see here are about the Z axis. So you can see here is a summary of the joints definition that I've made for the Tesla bot. And here is the Tesla bot Zacro file that, you, that we have right here. And you can see that here is just a bunch of links and joints to put together the robot and all of the STL files are gathered from the meshes folder. Okay. Now let's take a look at the changes that we've made to our cmakelist.txt file. So the different changes that we make are the three things. One is to find the package, another is to create the executables for our joint publisher, and finally to copy the files to the desired directories. So let's take a look in here at the actual changes. So you can see these lines here is to include the packages that we need. Here is to create the executable for the joint publisher. And then finally, these steps here is to copy the files over. Now for the package.xml file, the changes that we need to make are to add the dependencies for our RCL CPP as well as our trajectory messages. So you can see that we've added these two lines over here. Now for our launch file, we need to add some things to display our robot as well as other actions. So we have a launch gazebo, which will start up our gazebo. We have a robot state publisher, which will publish the state of our robot for visualization. We have a spawn robot component, which will display the robot in the gazebo. We have a joint state broadcaster, which will publish the state of the robot for control. And finally, the joint trajectory controller that will receive and control the robot joints. So let's take a look at our actual launch file here. So you can see here we have our includes up on top. And then here we're actually utilizing the gazebo ROS uh, package and then their launch file gazebo.launch.py. And then here inside we have a robot description. So this will parse our URDF file, the Tesla bot .urdf.zacro file and store it inside robot description, which will we then pass into here for our robot state publisher. So that will get the information of our robot. And finally, this will spawn our robot by using the robot description for our topic. And then the next two steps deal with the ROS2 control. So one, we're both loading controllers, but one is for the joint state broadcaster. And then the other one is for the joint trajectory controller. So we just go ahead and run the five uh, actions and then we'll get everything up and running. So coming back to here, we can see that 
Now to actually get everything up and running, what we want to do is build, source, and run the launch file. So a couple things to note is that sometimes if you see it not working properly, it could be because you didn't close your gazebo. Um, so you could actually force start it by running this command down here. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal and we could just run the command. I've already sourced it, but you can see if I run the um, command here, gazebo.launch.py, we could see our robot spawn inside gazebo. So it'll take a minute for it to start up, but you could see right here, we have our robot inside gazebo and you could pan it around. You could use your mouse wheel to spin around like I'm doing here. You could zoom in, zoom out with the key and you can also pan by dragging. Okay, so this is the robot model that we're using and later on we're going to see us animating it. So to actually move our robots, we have to have a little bit of understanding of the different types of ROS2 controllers. So here is just to name a few, but the main thing you want to note is once you've decided the type of ROS2 controller, so you could control the effort, like the torque or current, you could control the position, the velocity, there are special type of controllers that are meant for wheeled vehicles called the diff drive controller. And these are just some of them out there. There's more things like PID control, admittance control, and so on. But here, the main thing you want to notice is that when you choose your controller, you want to make sure you know what message type that they're using. Because later on, when we create our publisher, we need to send the messages in the correct format. So in our case, we're dealing with the joint trajectory controller. So here it uses a joint trajectory dot message. So this is the type of message that we're using. So later on, we'll take a look at how to actually format it properly. So if you want some references, you could check out the GitHubs here to have a better understanding of the different uh, message types out there inside the common interfaces. So to actually get it working, you have to set up the gazebo and ROS2 control in your URDF file. There's a certain section that you have to add inside of it. So I'll be going over that. Uh, but depending on the different type of controller you're using, you could choose different combinations of state interface and command interface. So the state interface allows you to read data and the command one allows you to send data. So the different types of interfaces you're dealing with would include position, velocity, and effort. So here is a general structure of your URDF file. So you can see here, all of the stuff on top is going to include your links and joints. And then the key part that we're adding on to our URDF file would be the ROS2 control components. So here we have uh, this part, the plugin that we've added. And then inside of here, you could have the list of your joints. So here we have joint one, and then you could so on to list your joints two, three, and four, however many you end up having. And inside of each joint, we uh, specify the command interface as well as the state interface, which we'll show in a little bit. And then finally, you have the gazebo component here, which will include our joint controller YAML file, which has the parameters that we're using. So if we go ahead and open up our file here for our URDF file, you could take a look at what's inside. So here inside of our Tesla bot Zacro file, if I scroll all the way down, we can take a look at our ROS2 control here. So specifically in this example, we have two joints that we're controlling. One is the arm upper to lower for the right, and then the one for the left. And you could set some parameters for the min and max angle for the joint. And then our command interfaces is going to be position. State interface is also position. And then uh, we have two more here for velocity and effort. And we also set an initial value to be zero here. Okay. And then for our gazebo plugin here, this part is going to look exactly the same as we showed earlier. Now for our ROS2 control YAML file that has our parameters. So the general structure of this is you have one section that has the controller manager. And then here you have some update rate, the name of your controller um, in this section, as well as your joint state broadcaster. And then you have another section that will have the name of your controller and the parameters you're using, such as the joint names, as well as the interface names, command interfaces, and state interfaces. So here is a concrete example of the one we're using. So we've set an update rate of 100. And here's the name of our controller here. And this is the type of controller. And then the two joints that we're using, it's a left and right upper arm to lower arm. 
And then finally, we have our command and state interfaces specified here. Now to simulate our robot in Gazebo, we need to use the joint publisher. So for the joint publisher, the first thing we need to understand is the message types that we talked about earlier. So in this case, we're using the joint trajectory message. So here is the actual definition of the message. So you can see that the joint trajectory message uses the joint trajectory point. Um, so if we take a look at that, the joint trajectory point includes position, velocity, acceleration, effort, as well as the duration. So we could take a look at our joint publisher file now. So here we created a node called joint publisher. And then inside of here, we created the name uh, inside of here, joint, tra joint trajectory controller, joint trajectory. So inside of here, we have the main thing that does all the work is the callback. So our callback function, we start off by making a message with the correct type. So notice that this right here has been included. So when we make the build, the files are made available to us because we've specified the dependencies. Uh, but here you can see that we have the joint names inside our message. So it's as a vector of just a bunch of names that we push back. And then here we have a point that we've declared. So the point is going to be a struct that contains the different information. So we have a point dot positions and we push back the positions as like a vector. And then we have the start time, which we've defined. And then we want to push back the message, uh, push back the point inside the message. And then finally, we print out our positions in this um, command here. So here we have our usual and our main function, the init, spin, and shutdown. Okay, So this is the main logic that actually controls the joints. So now to actually run it, we would have the previous terminal that we had up and running. So we want to have the gazebo launch up and running. And then we're going to have another one that does the joint publisher. So if I go ahead and uh, run that one. So this is going to be the terminal that actually causes the robot to move. So you can see now my robot is moving. And you can see the arms is moving according to the positions that I'm feeding it. Okay. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.